Okay, so I think we can get started. So hello everyone, I'm very glad that you came here. And today I'm going to tell you about Kotlin. Uh, probably everyone heard about uh, this language earlier, but if you don't, then don't worry, bec because I think that everyone will learn something new there. And at first I will introduce myself. I am Artur Czapek. Uh, I work as a Java developer at Metrosoft, uh, and unfortunately we don't use Kotlin yet, but uh, uh, in my free time, I'm, uh, I'm frequently use this language because I'm an enthusiast of Kotlin. And in my free time, I write blog, uh, simplecoding.pl, and that's all about me for now, I guess. And what I'm going to tell you about today? At first, uh, I will tell you some uh, words about Kotlin. And the main part of this presentation will be creating a simple app which can be useful for you and your coworkers. Unfortunately, there won't be a Q&A se session because we have only 30 minutes, so sorry. And a few words about Kotlin. This language was created by JetBrains, and yes, the, these are the same guys which created IntelliJ, which probably most of you use. Uh, this language is developed since 2011 and is developed steadily since then. Current version is 1.1.2, and uh, first, uh, first uh, stable version was released in February 2016, so not far ago. And the main version of Kotlin is based on JVM. Why main? Because uh, Kotlin, Kotlin can compile to native, has native version 2. Yes, you can compile your Kotlin directly to machine code, but uh, unfortunately it's still underdeveloped, which, me, which shows us uh, zero at the front of current version, 0 0.2, but I think it's worth following. And uh, Kotlin can translate your code even to JS or HTML, and I think it's great because you can uh, you can write whole project in one language, but, uh, and you can see how to do it in uh, additional sources which are added to this presentation. And uh, Kotlin is official language of Android, which was announced at Google I.O. conference in this year, to, uh, in May. And it, cannot, it is not insig insignificant if uh, this mark, big mark as Google uh, can trust this technology and uh, developers of Android. Coding has many advantages. The first one is, for me, it is easy to learn for Java developers. In me, as a Java developer, it took maybe one or maybe two evenings to know the basic concept of this language. Coding is interoperated with Java, which means that uh, you can easily use uh, external Java libraries in Kotlin and other way around. There is no problem. Kotlin has something like incremental compilation. You've probably heard from Scala developers usually, oh my god, why it compiles so long? In Kotlin, you uh, doesn't have this problem because Kotlin has something like incremental compilation. Usually, we developers changing a few lines of code, and after that, if you want to compile our project, we need to recompile the whole project, and it takes time sometimes. But in this case, Kotlin recompiles only affected classes and files by our development, so it can take less time than in Java sometimes. And you can check also in additional references. I added a uh, source to research from one of bloggers. Kotlin is null safety. It means that uh, by default, variable cannot be null. But if you want to be null there, you need to assign it at first. And if uh, Kotlin will know that uh, there can be null, but if you don't want to use it, then your program will not compile. So I think it's great because we can control, control nulls. And Kotlin has also lots of more advantages, which I'll show you later, like extension functions, no boilerplate in code, etc., etc. Okay, I hope that some of you are still awake, so let's write some code. I create a simple application uh, which can be useful for you and your coworkers. And what this application will do? As you can see, there is a simple dashboard where we uh, we can log in as, uh, for example, user one there, and you can grant token to other users. What is token? Token, in this case, is something like, let's say, award from other user for great work. I can say that uh, user free works well, and I can grant him token. Uh, it's pretty simple, I guess. So let's go to this application. This application is based on a Spring style. In this case, it's Spring Boot, Spring Security, Spring Web, Spring JPA, etc., etc. And also, I'm using great to build. And it's easy integrated with that. We don't have to create other different ways. I just generate it by Spring Initializer. If you want to check the uh, whole configuration, you can check it at my source code at GitHub, which I will pass to you later. There will be an additional screen for my configuration. Also, 
I will create a simple front end because I guess that you don't want to see it. But it's, there are two pages. And uh, for now, we have uh, also created application, yeah, which if you're using uh, Spring on a daily basis, there is nothing unusual. There is just uh, configured our data source, JPA, connection to H2 and uh, server address. And of course, there is root class, DevOps application, which was generated by Spring Initializer. And as you can see at first, there is DevOps application class, which has not body. It doesn't even have curly braces. IntelliJ can show us remove empty body. It's redundant in this case. Also, next, there is main function, which is preceded by fun keyword. And yes, it doesn't have to be an inside class. We can create a simplifier with functions. It will be OK. And this function receives arcs, and after column is typed. The typed is defined. In this case, it's array, which is another class in Kotlin. And of course, it is generic. As you can see, it receives strings, of course, like uh, normal main in Java. Next, there is run method for Spring application, which, uh, which allows us to run uh, this application in Spring. And as you can see, in after DevOps application, there are two columns and class. And after that, there is that with Java. Why? Without this that Java, we would have something like key class, not normal class. And uh, there is a problem because we want to pass their uh, Java class. OK, so it will work. We need to create our MVC model and uh, security model, but we don't have much time. So I will use prepared snippet to this in this case. And I will tell you what's going on here, because this, this is important. OK, so let's start from MVC config function uh, class, sorry. And after this class, you can see column sign and web MVC configure. It means that in this case, we can implement, implement interface or extend class. Has to, how to distinguish? Uh, if we extend some class, abstract or normal class, we need to specify to which constructor will be called, like in this case. It will be empty constructor, but we will implement their interface, so we cannot do it. Next, there is function bin encoder, which is a, an ordinary bin. And after column, it is, there is defined what this function returns. And in this case, it is a bigquery password encoder. But Kotlin can, uh, has something like interference types, which means that it's redundant in this case. It will work too. And after that, there is no function body, just, uh, just equal sign. And it means that this function has a one line, and value of this one line will be returned. In this case, we will create a new bigquery password encoder. But hey, there is no new keyword. Yes, we mustn't use it, because in Kotlin, there is nothing like new keyword. We just need to type this uh, class name and his constructor. OK. And next, there is function, which is overridden or implemented from web MVC configure. But in Kotlin, override is an, not an annotation, but keyword. and it is required. If I remove it, IntelliJ show us there is error. Add override modifier. It is needed. And after that, in this function, we have register object, which is passed to, a, to this function. And we call run there. What does it do? It means that all these functions, add view controller, will be called on this register object. We don't need to type registry, 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 registry every time. OK, it's all for MVC config class. Let's go to the configuration class, which, as you can see, extend, in this case, web security configure adapter class with empty constructor. But there is open keyword. Why? In Kotlin, by default, classes are final. Also, fields in this classes too. So if you want to ex extend this class later, we need to precede class or field by open keyword. And in this case, we have to do it because uh, Spring uh, can, can don't allow us to doesn't allow us to be final in this case. And after that, you can see that there are, uh, there are some braces and two values there, bigquery password encoder and data source. Uh, in this way, we can define default constructor after, after class name. And uh, of course, you could, do type, you could type their constructor, but it's redundant. It will work in the same way. And we don't have to type autowire because I'm using Spring 5 in this case, so autowire is redundant if we have only one constructor. And as I, as I said, there is simple extended class. OK, and there is simple configure function, which is simple Spring configuration, so I will not talk about it anymore. 
And now it's time for you to see how I'm really writing something in Kotlin. So let's start from creating user, which will be needed. And it will be default uh, user class, which is uh, from default uh, Spring security schema. And we'll create class user, but I will precede it by data keyword. What does it do? It allows us to use a function like to string, equals, hash code, and copy. We don't have to type anymore. Of course, you could generate it by your ID, by why mess up with your code so much if it's redundant. OK, of course, it will be entity, because we want to insert it to our database. And there will be table with name users. Mm. OK, and after that, we will use default constructor. Because if we use data, we need to create default constructor, and there must be at least one, f one field which will be filled in our class. And all this uh, property, sorry, will be a field in our class. And how to do it? We need to precede a field name by var as variable, or var as value keyword. Values are immutable, of course. And let's start from ID. And I will precede by ID annotation, and there will be column with name user ID in this case. I define type for it. It will be long. And initial value will be zero. Why? In Kotlin, if we, if we have uh, initial values in constructor, we don't have to type them. We can uh, set which values uh, shouldn't, should be set there. And if we set the all values default there, then we can use empty constructor, which will be needed later. OK, I will create another columns like username. With default, let's say empty string. It doesn't matter for now. Okay, password. We have to know if user is enabled, so it would be a simple boolean. And let's say at first user is enabled, and we need to use authority ID, which is a, a foreign key to another table, which I will create soon. And let's say at first there will be also long with value of zero. And we need to store our tokens, how many tokens user received and how many tokens user can uh, hand out to other users. So we create two simple fields like received and it can be null. And let's say at first user has no tokens and user can grant the give tokens to other users. So let's create to give it. And at first, let's say we can give uh, 10 tokens. OK, and that's all class. We can, uh, we can refer to all fields. We have uh, two strings, equ equals, etc. We don't have even body there, and I think that's great. Next, I will create uh, authority, but uh, it will be almost the same, so I will use, I will use another snippet for not wasting time. Uh, as you can see, there is a simple authority class with three fields, authority ID, name, and authority. I think that, I, uh, that everyone knows what's going on there. OK, now we need to uh, create interface for our repository. So I will create interface user repository, which will ex extend interface CRUD repository, Spring Data. And it will receive user, and I ID will be type of long. I will create there one custom method, and it will be find one by name, which will return as user with passing name. Uh, let's assume there will al always be a user, so I will not type question mark, which I tell you soon what's going on there. Okay, and for authority object, I will create uh, only simple um, interface of repository, which will extend CRUD repository, and will be used for our authority with ID along. And that's all. Another time, there is nobody for this interface. Okay. Now we can fill our database with some data, in some data. So we create something like user insert runner, and it will implement command line runner interface, command line runner interface, which uh, allows us in Spring insert some, uh, call some functions and code at the start of this application. So we need, of course, assigned as a service, let's say. And in default constructor, we need to inject three types, uh, three things. First, it will be User repository to inserting user, our repository, and we need to encrypt this password by created bin error and it is bcrypt password encoder. Okay, that's our 
by our command line runner. And we need to implement run method, which is uh, gotten from our user inside runner. As you can see, this run receives something like varark, and it means that w there we can get a uh, various amount of strings in this case, which is uh, defined after args, but there is a question mark. It means that we can deal with null value there, so we need to be careful if you want to use it. And also, another important thing is that varark can be used in, uh, one in function only once. Okay? In let's say that at first we want to insert 20 users. We would probably do it by, uh, by for loop or something like that, but we can do something like a range in Kotlin. Uh, let's say we want to create uh, one, two, three, four, and up to 20. We can do it by typing initial value, two dots, and final value. Both values are in range, so this returns us 20, 20 numbers. We can also define step, for example, and other things, but by default there is one step, so let's say that I use it in this way. And of course, we want to use for each now on this range. At first, we need to create ID for user authority. So let's say that value ID will be equal our our current element in this for each, and we can refer to current element in for each map filter and etc. by it word, which is now among from other Groovy, for example. And in this case, as you can see, there is integer, and IDs are type of long. Probably in Java you would use something like long value of static function, but in Kotlin we have this function as uh, primitive types. So we can call it in this way. There will be one as long, two as long, and etc. And we create name for user. And let's say that user names will be user one, user two, user three, user four. So in Java you would do it in this way. But Kotlin can interpret this value in string. So you can type dollar sign and after that uh, some value and there will be ins inserted proper value. Of course, you can call also function in it, but you need to type this in query brace. So for example, call on this element this function and that will be okay. Result of this function will be inserted that there, but let's stay with this one. Next, we'll create authority object at first and Remember, we mustn't use new keywords, so we will just type authority. ID was first, so uh, I will type it there, and name. Default uh, value for authority will be user, so I don't have to type it there, and it will work too. And save this authority to our repository. Great. Now, for user, we will create it in uh, non-default order. So if we, sell, if we want to uh, write some value to ID, at first we need to type name of this field, and after that, after equal sign, we need to type this value. So ID will be equal ID, which is uh, our value. For authority ID, we will use ID again, because it's the same in this case. These are different tables. Name will be uh, equal name, and password will be, sorry, equal name again, uh, and we need to encode there, but it's not good practice, so don't do this, please. I'll do it for now, and I will save this user. Okay, this should fill our database, so let's see if it works at first. Okay, there are some inserts hibernate, as you can see. So at first, let's try to log in this our application by user one, user one. There is nothing because we doesn't create another functionality for now, but we can check our database for just to make sure. So let's see what's in, in user table. As you can see, there are uh, real users with IDs uh, from range, authorities IDs. I, every user is enabled, usernames are the same as we want, and passwords are encoded. Also, every user has zero received tokens and can uh, grant 10 tokens. So for now, it's okay. Now, it's time for creating real functionality. So we'll create another service, and it will be, let's say, user service, which will receive to constructor only user repository, which will be needed. Of course, we need to assign it as a service. And we create there three functions. Let's start from the give token. And in this function, we will send token from one user to another. And we need to use, we need to know user ID, which should receive this token. 
and user which is logged in now. And we can give this, get this user from principals from Java security. And we'll do it in this way. And at first, we will uh, get logged in user from our database by uh, user repository. And we call the, their function find one by name, which I created earlier. And probably in Java, you will type principal get name. But in Kotlin, we can use something like property access syntax. It means that uh, you can refer to fields where are getters and setters in Java by typing just their names, and it will work. Also, if principal wouldn't be final and has a setter, we, can, uh, we could just uh, type a new value by typing principal name equal, and there would be new name, but as you can see, there is a problem because val cannot be reassigned, and so it means that there is final. Okay, next. We need to check if this user can grant token, because if we have, have a, hasn't any, so why I can do it then? So we will check if locked in user has token to give, and if has any, we will get a user which should receive this token from our database. So there will be another user, user to give, and we get him from our repository by find by ID, and we pass there to user ID. But there is an optional, so we need to remember about that. Uh, so let's assure, assure that, uh, assume that there always will be a user. So let's type only get. And there's, this is from optional, and it's OK for now. And now we can transfer this token to this user. So let's call locked in user, transfer token to, and this function will receive user to give. But there is nothing like transfer token to. We need to create another function. Probably you would insert this function to our class user. But in Kotlin, it's something like extension function. It means that you can create another function outside the body of the proper class. And it means that you don't have to create utils class or commons where we use static functions for objects which uh, are from other libraries and external sources. And uh, in this way, we have access to user in this case. We need to type a uh, class name which will uh, use this function, and it will be OK. Next, uh, if we can do it, we can also refer to an object which called this method by this keyword. And if user want to send token, we need to uh, decrease uh, to give tokens. And also, user which should receive token should have one more receive tokens. And it's a simple function for now. IntelliJ shows us it's OK, so it will work. But we can do it better. We can type something like infix keyword. No, not interface, infix. OK, and I, I think that everyone knows what infix is. It's a simple notation like if you want to add 2 uh, plus 2. And we can call a function this way. So let's see. And it's valid too. It will work too, and uh, works too. And I think that. Uh, you can literally read your code in this case. So I think it looks very good. And let's save this user to our repository. And login user and user to give. Great. There is first function. We need to, two more. So we need to dis display all users on our dashboard except logged in one. So we need to check it by principal again. At first, we will get all users from our repository, so we'll type find all function. And after that, we, let's say we want to use only ID field and name field, so we can to map this user. And let's say, in this case, we return simple map with two fields. We can do it by typing, for example, map of function, which will create an immutable map in this case. And what do we need to type there? Uh, we can do pair, and in this pair, we can type key and value. But in Kotlin, we can do it better. We can just type key value, and let's say it will be a string called ID. Type two, and after that, we can type value of the, for this key. And we will refer to a current user by eight keyword again, and we'll type ID field. And this is mapped with one field for now. Another key pair value can, uh, can be passed by typing after comma another pair. Name to it name. And it's OK. Every user will be mapped in this case. But 
we want to, uh, as I said earlier, return all except blocking ones. So we need to filter them. So we will get from a principal object our name, and we'll check if name is not equal to ours. So we will get from it, which is a map for now. But as you can see, map is with string and any. And any in Kotlin is something like object in Java. It's only root class, but with different names. So there will be just different. And you would probably get by key uh, by typing in this way in Java. But in Kotlin, you can do it better, too. You can just do it by passing key in uh, square braces, like in uh, Java, for example. JavaScript, for example, if you want to get some uh, field from JSON, let's say. OK, we can return this data. Of course, we need to define the which type will be returned, but because if he doesn't return for function and he doesn't know what will be returned, there is a unit, which is a void in Kotlin. Void from Java, of course, but we don't have to define it in this way. A good practice is not typing unit. And we will return this, uh, this list with map, with string, with n. But it looks ugly. And in Kotlin, we can alias it. So we'll type user's map, which will be a simple alias. I think that ev everyone knows what alias is, so we, don't, we just need type type alias, name of this alias, and this value. Oops, I forgot something. OK, and this is OK. Let's go there. And there is OK, I guess. It looks great. And we create another simple function, and it will be get data, which return data for logged in user. And so we need to use principal again. And in this case, I will use expression about the once again. So I will return one, uh, one line function. So I will type equal sign. And after that, again, we will get user by find one by name. And we'll get this name from principal object by typing principal name. And this one line function returns us uh, user. And OK, I think that in Kotlin, it's all. Let's create a simple controller in Java, which will, will use this all, um, all fun functions. So we we'll use user controller. Because we don't have any time, so I will create another, use another snippet, so sorry for that. And there is, as you can see, a simple Java controller where we use user service, which if we go there, we, we are in Kotlin class again, so it works OK. And uh, there are called our functions, which I have created earlier. But unfortunately, we cannot use aliases in Java, so we need to remember about it, because there is list, map, string, and object, not any in this case. And OK, uh, we have controllers. We have uh, whole functionality in Kotlin. And now we can rerun our application. Let's see what's going on here. Oops. There are two instances, so it won't work, or maybe. <laughs> Let's see. OK, there are some inserts. H2 is in memory database, so uh, previous data disappeared, so there is no problem. OK, so let's log into our application by user1 and user1. OK, as you can see, we've really received, uh, we have received zero, zero tokens and has 10 tokens to give. And also, we can see that there is 19 users with Kotlin, Pacman, something like that. And for now, we can give token to user which should uh, receive, in our opinion, of course. So let's say that user 2 works well. So give him four tokens. And user 3, oh, he works better. So let's say that he receives all tokens which I have. So in this case, will be six. Login as user 2. Here you receive four tokens and has 10 tokens to give, but he really loves user free. So let's say that uh, we will send whole tokens which, can, which we have to user free. And let's see what user free has. And he really received 16 tokens. It's more than he, has, uh, he can give, so he must really work hard. OK. Uh, and let's say that uh, this is whole application and uh, this, I think, this uh, this uh, something simple that uh, what we can create it in 30 minutes. Sorry, I don't have more times if I want it. So, 
thanks you for coming there. I think that uh, if you have any more questions, you can catch me there around. You can check additional sources about Kotlin after this link. And uh, at the end, because I forgot, I think that uh, you should try Kotlin if you didn't, because uh, Kotlin is a language of future, in my opinion, because it Spring uh, trusts this technology, Google trusts this technology, so it's, uh, I think that it's a big advantage for this language. So you should try it, really. Okay, so thank you for coming once again, and see you around. <laughs>